dialogue, we gon' tell the truth We ain't scared like a lot of y'all Matters who they are, do we bow? Nope. Not at all, dropping bombs on this wicked world So it gotta fall underground Underground, underground dialogue We gon' tell the truth, we ain't scared Like a lot of y'all matters who they are Do we bow? Nope. Not at all, dropping bombs on this wicked world So it gotta From fall From the industry to the Oval Office We expose the darkest motives of them all And disclose what the protocol is Thinking and moving logical Stopping every maneuver possible And apologizing for truth is not optional uh, We gon' help you with what you go through Reshape and mold you And sweep over the weak lies they told you If you living with no clue We gon' deprogram the old you And you get to What's keep your soul on, too man? It's your big brother K. Reno Boy, Keith Stowe Y'all tune in again to the Underground Dialogue Podcast Where the man speaks for us already And once again, we got a little legend Sitting in the legend seat, man yeah, it, it, What is it? Is it dead end night? Uh, hey, absolutely <laughs> Absolutely Yeah, the dead end boy what side of town you from? You know, you're, you're, you're a minority. I'm going to hear Mo City on this side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, but look, this, this, this brother here, he is a, a softball uh, dead end legend, man. He is one of the most respected rappers in the, in the game, respected by some of the greatest in the game, man. His word, he's a wordplay and punchline specialist. And I always have loved to listen to this man rap, whether it be on the record or whether it be on Instagram or wherever he's getting down. You can tell he puts all his heart and passion into his craft. And he's still doing it, man, at a high, high, high level. I'm honored to have my brother. Killer Collion is in the building, man. What's going on? What's going on, OG, man? It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And, you know, I, I give you your flowers all the time, you know, no matter where we are. But... It's an honor to really be sitting here being, you know, getting my flowers from one of my peers, man. That, that means a lot because my reason for rapping, it was never really about the money. Because I know if you do anything good, you're going to get paid for right. it. Yeah. But I always did it to be able to be in the room with people that I looked up to, to hear them tell me, boy, you one of them ones. Yeah. I lived for that. Yeah. Yeah. I always said if we was able to give a K Reno award, like, we had an award called the K. Reno Award. <laughs> Super High Lyricist Award. You'd be the first one to get it. And I appreciate yeah, it. You'd be the man. first one to get it. I appreciate yeah. that, for sure. Man, let, let's get right into it, man. This about you. What what started your journey, man? When did you first get bit by the bug and say, this, this rap thing, I, I, got, I got to do it. I got to do it. It got to be my first time ever looking at Rap City with Chris Thomas and Looking at oh, the yeah. TV routes yeah. with 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 um Ed Lover and Drake, you know what I mean. Once I seen that, I knew that's what I wanted to do because I've been an all around student and an addict yeah. of hip hop my entire life. You know what I mean. I spray painted, I did tag, and I do art as well. Yeah. You know, just like you, I hoop. Yeah. And it was either rapping or hoop. Right, right, right. No doubt about it, man. That's amazing, man. Um, so. What year was that when, when you first picked that thing up? Because I know it got to be 88. 88? And when did you get the car? When you just had to get in that car and get the car? So yeah. I work out, you know yeah. what I mean? That, that's my thing. Fitness is real big, health is real yeah. big with me. So I feel like if you want to exercise the body, you got to exercise the mind too. Yeah. And so, like, when I started in that car, that's just like my on my route to the gym. That was my lyrical exercise. That's mm -hmm. the gym because. I always wrote my reps in two places, one in the car and one in the mirror. I write in the mirror because I ain't in competition with nothing but myself. I'm trying to be a better me. Yeah. And when I get in the car, that's what 90% of the music is absorbed, yeah. is in the vehicle. So when I get in there, I lyrical exercise. I hear beats, and it be so hard for me to process everything because I process so much up here, I barely write. Yeah. So when I do write, I'm in the car, and just, oh shit, let me put this in the notes. Yeah. Oh, let me do this and let me think of this when I think of certain lines, but I just be having a conversation with it. Yeah. You know, but I always knew just from the jump, this is what I wanted to do. What, how did you establish your identity? Um, or if you could even tell us what is your identity? What what type of rapper? You know, we don't like to get put in boxes, but what type of rapper would you, because I, I, I view you a lot of times as like, you're a pure lyricist, but you, also, uh, like a reality basically, because you can you can go straight lyrical assassin, but you will speak on some subjects that like it still had a lyricism infused in it. So, what's your 
identity, if, if not to use the word label, but if you could just label yourself. Definitely. Um, I want to be in the ranks of a you. I want to be in the ranks of a bread. I want to be in the ranks of a Nas, of a Big Daddy Kane. Like I grew up on substance. You just yeah. didn't. You you couldn't just rap hard. You know how you you got to be able to make that rap an actual song. Come on, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So. It's like I always wanted to be able to do this in song format, but when a microphone get on, I was I, I, I'm a, a microphone fiend, like yeah. right, like Rock Kim always said, like I wanted to be heard no matter where I was at, and it's crazy because I'm sure we gonna get it in, into it in the story. Like it's just my whole I could write a book yeah. on how this how this shit really went for yeah. me because it's yeah. crazy because I grew up on both ends of the city. Yeah. Around yeah. everybody that's the man. Right. Yeah. And it was so many things that I looked and I took from and I was like, I don't like how that sound. Yeah. But I always overly critiqued and I always sharpened my sword because when a microphone come on, I want to be already ready. I, when the camera on, I want to be ready. I got something to prove at all times. But if I can put myself in a category, it'd be those categories like I feel like lyricism is really important because you, it gives you a wide range yeah, to yeah. do things. But I wanted to be that unicorn. I want to be good at every come on man. every yeah. part of rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come on, your your yeah. voice has um, a command. You got a commanding presence to your voice. Like when you come in, it's like you can be doing this here. Like who was that? You know, yeah. just instantly. If somebody never even heard you before, that commanding presence that your voice got. But I think what um, enhances that is the fact that you are, you do have this depth to your lyricism, you do have these layers to the way you write, and because the voice could be dope and all that, you got a lot of people that sound good on impact, yeah. but when you start to break down, it's like, he really ain't saying that, but you have both, like, the commanding voice, and then when you listen, like, oh, that boy says some some things, like, so like, just to hear you say you listen to the Rock Kims and the Big Daddy Kane's, you know, that, that helped to nurture you. What started you on the, I guess we say the industry path, you know, because we all go through that training ground of just mm -hmm. rapping in the streets, rapping in the hood. Then we say, I think I'm good enough to make these records now. When did that pop off and when did you know you were ready to do that side? I mean, pretty much, I want to say in the early, like the late, the late 90s, the 98s to the 99s to the 2000s. So I, you've been always, in the field 10 years before you jumped in. Yeah, yeah, I've been in there a little longer than that. Yeah. You know, it's just, I knew then exactly what I wanted to do because it's just, I, it was inevitable. Once I got to the point where I said I wanted to be in, because I wanted to be a staple for the city, like when they talk about all these guys because they really were not talk about this all for a long time. Come on, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like me seeing the East Coast and the Mecca where everything came from. I was heavily inspired with that. Right. So when I heard people that get down, like when I heard y'all, mm -hmm. when I heard the Coalition, Killer Clean, mm -hmm. when I heard Slaughter, when I heard Face, the Ghetto Boys, I knew right then and there. I say, well, I always pattern myself. I don't want to sound like nobody right. but me. Yeah, yeah. So what I would do is I would create cadences in my brain. Yeah of how I want to rap, and I wanted to rap like how I dress. I might put a suit on, mm -hmm. I might put on street clothes, yeah. I might get militant. Yeah. I wanted to have a different identity on every song because I didn't want to be one dimensional, never. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I would take a lot of everything that I see and I'd just be prepared, but I just knew once I was prepared and once my sword was sharpened, I wanted to take it to the next level. And it was a lot of things that halted me from going to the level level. You know, I, I done been right there at the peak of it. Yeah. And it's like, now I'm, me looking at you, me looking at the killer mics, it ain't never over. Ain't no age breaking on yeah. this. Yeah. And I hate that they trying to marginalize it with an age breaking now, yeah. because it's no age on this shit. It's like rock and roll. Look at Mick Jagger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 80. Come on. I look at you like how, like how like we look at K and like how we look at Face. They last two albums were their best albums. I mm -hmm. think your last album was your best album. When I go through it, it's, it was uh, it's one, it's like it's one, it's two R.I.P. songs that ever put chills on me. I think it was the R. Kelly one, the I Wish, and it was the R.I.P. Nug. 
Yeah, it's yeah. N-O-G. Yeah. That's, that was like my dad. Yeah. It's like, yeah. that's my dad's little brother. Yeah. That's who raised me. South Park legend, Lil' Nova. Yeah. You know, so the N-O-G is his name. is Novia O'Gwen. Okay. So it's N-O-G. Yeah. And it's like, that's one song that I hate I had to write. Yeah, no doubt. And it, I cry because I can't even listen to it. Yeah. Man, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> you know what, what I mean? Because yeah. it was like I had to make a song to my daddy. Yeah. Like the man that showed me everything. Yeah. And to even hear you say that, yeah. every time I approach a rap, yeah. I want it to be impactful like that. Yeah. 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 I want it to always be the standout. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when Reno was saying like my voice and everything, I trained my voice to be a certain way. I trained every which aspect. I looked at the do's and don'ts, but that song in particular, yeah. that's like one of the songs I hate I had to ever write. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that you said that was good for I, your dad. I thought it was for your partner, but it touched my, me that's because I had a little brother, yeah. but I consider him. My dad was there. Yeah. But that's who showed me everything. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was really my daddy through it all. He was the one that was my biggest fan. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. And he showed me everything, told me everything about being a man, being a family man, being a real nigga, period, being a hustler, being outside, what to look for, how to carry myself. Yeah. You know, he taught me all of that. Yeah. And you know, when I lost him, it just is it's like damn everything yeah, I do now. My soul out my body now. Yeah. 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 Shit. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You said you said there was some things that you said that halted you from yeah. from, from, from I guess you said busting through. What do you wanna uh elaborate on that? It was pretty much, you know, I, I try not to really make excuses yeah. for a lot of things, but boy, I got hated on. Yeah. Heavily. Yeah. I had so many situations where people felt like if they didn't benefit from it. They wasn't gonna allow me to go through these certain doors, but I've been in every certain door that a man can even think about mm -hmm. at the height of his career wanting to be at those doors mm -hmm. and seeing people, insecurities not allow me to walk through them doors. Yeah. When I was told to be on paperwork with people, people were sending people season decisions. I talk about it for the first time on Vinton, on Mike Joy, yeah, yeah. on my song Vinton, when I really talk about it, but don't talk about it, because I don't play the bang game. Yeah, yeah. Because one monkey don't stop no show. At the end of the day, as long as I got air in my lungs, I'm gonna keep shooting for this spot. Right, right. Now that's what you talking about, like at the radio station? When you, when you was flowing and you had shot out Trey? Yeah, that, that stopped yeah. my radio. Yeah thing, you know what I mean? But, you know, that's still my partner, whatever yeah. they had. At the, at, at the height of my career, the way everything started going when the wheels was on the ground and the boots was on the ground, you know, I just wanted to pay respect to everybody that I feel like played a part in my career. Yeah. And it was a proud moment. And I said around, you know, I hope this don't hurt me, yeah. you know what I mean? But I don't know what's going on and I shouldn't. And what, what I hate the most, is nobody told me, hey, you get on, I don't say yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And if they would have did that, I wouldn't have never said it, but I still would have felt fraud that I wasn't yeah, able yeah, to see yeah. it because it wasn't my situation. I just shouted out the whole city and I felt like that was one of my close partners that I wanted to even speak on. I didn't know it was going to hurt me for doing it because I didn't know the severity of it. Well, the thing, it shouldn't have, but it's, it's because of the, the, the powers that was in control of the situation. You can't, they can't be upset with you because you have a relationship with somebody that they got a problem with. Exactly. And that's always been something that bothers me. I'm like, okay, man, they was doing that a lot around that time. And we get started on my history with 97, 9 and all them cats. Yeah. We'll be here all day. But <clears throat> you can't get into a situation where you try to monitor and police everybody's mouth the relationship because you got a problem with somebody like that. So I mean, yeah, that that you know, I felt what you said. You said you felt like you may you might not even know if they were told you in advance, part of you might have still said, yeah. I might do it or you might not. But yeah, yeah. no, it wasn't gonna be no question. I had yeah. to do what I had to do just being a real but it ended up working itself yeah. out. You know yeah, what I mean? They still you. got love for me and yeah. it made me just turn up a little bit more for my passion to keep going and it all worked because what a lot of people don't understand is you can be radio, but you can also, I always looked at the aspect, 
As long as I got the streets and the underground and everything else, I don't even need that. Because yeah. the internet made it made it for me to have traction because I could reach people further than just there. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it worked itself out. I'm still I'm back on the radio and all that, but you know, the internet and technology that made it now, well, you know. Playing field. These yeah. d, these yeah. stations and doing podcasts and just doing different interviews, it gives it more of a wide range to where it made so many different entities in music obsolete. Exactly. Because technology made everything accessible. When you we got our own media on the underground stream on, yeah. that really does more for you than radio. You 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 got you got to minimize your reach. Now you international. Yeah. At the, at, when you push in a go do everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't gotta compromise yeah. your beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the yeah. talent and the yeah. talent gonna get you places where certain things can't get Come you. On, man. Come on. All you gotta do is keep shooting your shot, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like Kobe said, you miss ninety percent of the shots yeah. you don't take. Yeah. yeah. Come on, without a doubt, man. And you know, and the thing like the social media side that you was talking about, when Killer Calion drops a verse when he spits on his Instagram instantly it's thousands of views looking on that so that's a validation to, to show how great you are because it's like people posting raps all the time they're not getting those kind of numbers so i think that uh and not not just the average fan not, we don't play big eyes and little use but you are respected by some of the top names in the game and just top known i've heard shaq shot you out on that's one of my real close that's one of my real close friends yeah. Yeah. and the fact that it's a that, that my rapping got me in those rooms yeah. is really why i did this yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean that's my yeah. whole thing about yeah. Being able to rap to so I hear people that I look at that, that I feel like they gods to me yeah. to tell me that and it's like can't nobody else tell me shit. Right. You know I, what I mean? Remember one time I was watching um what's that that legendary battle with Dipset and uh in the locks. Oh, oh, no. Versus, versus, yeah. Versus. And then I happened just to scroll down. And I said, "What do you know? It's goddamn killer right there next yeah. with a uh, with a uh, with, right with with a uh, with a uh, yeah and Fab." But then afterwards, you was with uh, Jada. And then when I seen y'all two together, I started to think. I said, "I remember Jada. I can't really never think of a bad Jada verse." No. And then like when I thought about it, I said, you know what? I can't really think of a bad killer verse. Yeah, I can't think of a bad killer verse. There's two like, of my favorite yeah. rappers on earth. Yeah. Yeah. And they actually my dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. crazy to even be able to even be amongst them and get yeah. the love that I get because they was the reason I was there. They yeah. asked me to come. Yeah. And I, I couldn't miss that to come witness on, that. Yeah. I, I was able to witness that like New York besides yeah. home is my second favorite place yeah. on earth yeah. because it's just when I'm now, it's just the essence and the, and the vibe of hip hop yeah. just flow through yeah. me because it's just like, this way it started. Yeah. Right. Right. And I wouldn't want to live no other place but Houston yeah. in life. And I done been everywhere. Yeah. It ain't no place like home. Like I'm, like Addison, like I'm talking about here. Yeah, there ain't no place like home. <laughs> like the Wizard of Oz, I'm yeah. trying to tell you. People know though, man, like I said, when they hear you, it, it don't matter, like you said, be among the gods, you a god yourself. So, yeah, you yeah. Know, so you just, you establish your godhood and not all the other gods are like, hey, this dude right here. You know, yeah. so that's why a lot of times, um, what you was talking about earlier about people's insecurities, that stood out to me because you coming in authentic, like, hey, I'm just glad to be here with y'all guys, but y'all are seeming to have a cloud of insecurity, like threatened by, by my presence. But they fooled yeah. me too. Yeah. I'm a wolf. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. I'm a wolf. Yeah. I don't wanna, it, it's something you said to me, damn near every time I give your flowers, and it took my chick to even just be telling me like, baby, it's cool to get your flowers, but yeah. you get your flowers so much, you be you don't even be grabbing yours when Come they hand them to you. Come on, and she man. say, what you gotta start doing, accept your flowers. Yeah. Just stop giving. You ain't gotta, once you done gave them, <laughs> yeah. start accepting your flowers. Yeah. She say, you yeah. don't even be knowing, you so humble to yeah. the point, yeah. you don't even know how to take your flowers right. when they give yeah. them to you. Right. It's like, she say like, you get your flowers and you give them back. Right, right. Right. That's what I'm with. Yeah. Yeah. She say sometime, man, when they give you your yeah. flowers, she yeah. say, man, 
you ain't don't stop addressing everybody like you up under. You yeah. equal now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She yeah. say you the big homie now. You ain't gotta unk nobody. You unk now. Yeah, that's Come on, good one. Man. Come yeah, on, yeah. <laughs> but she be around and she see that and she yeah. tell me that like, uh, nigga, yeah. you him. Yeah. She say you be knowing you him. Yeah. She say but when you get around yo yo niggas and people you look up to, she say <laughs> she say you ain't gotta do that. You yeah. one of them now. You in the room for a reason. Yeah, yeah for real. And I say yo, but still in the back of my mind, mm -hmm. I be in awe. Oh, yeah. Because I go back to that time when I'm just rapping and writing in my room and recording all my VHSs. I still got all this shit. Yeah. When I was recording Rap City and I get to be around these dudes and I'm around them and they accept me as an equal. Yeah. That's some that's some amazing shit. Yeah. You in the room with Jordan. Yeah. And Jordan looking like you be busting my ass. Right, right. That foul, right. but you, yeah. you be yeah. you, right. bro. You one of me. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know that, that that analogy. I was just going out. It's like a cat coming into the NBA, and he getting he finally getting to see all the guys he watched growing up. Yeah. But a, a good coach have to tell you, say man, get your jaw off the ground because you got to guard that dude. We, and I, we and trying to beat him. Tonight. You know, I always compare rap to hooping. Yeah. Because yeah, me too. I, I compared it to that to that so much because you gotta be able to be a killer. I yeah, wanted to yeah. be a killer. Right. I ain't wanna be nothing but a killer. When the clock on, your ass is grass. Come on, I, man. I, if I come before you, pause or after pressure. you pause. Pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't never when the mic yeah. on, you fool. I right. don't give a damn. Yeah, right. who. Yeah. Who on the song? Yeah. Right. I approach every rucker like it's mine. It is. And it's like when the beat on, I don't give a damn. I'm like Saran Rap. I'm on the hill. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn who in front yeah. of that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. I feel well, like I don't I'm the hill. I feel like I'm the I feel like I'm the hill. And it ain't yeah. nothing nobody can't yeah. tell yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. We can shake hands after that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm on your ass. I'm like Mike. Oh, when I, yeah. when I, it's like when I watch the last dance, I be watching this shit over and yeah, over and yeah, over and yeah. don't nobody understand. And I be yeah. like, bro, mm -hmm. I done felt like that right. mm -hmm. all my life. I'm a dead end nigga. <laughs> I grew up on the north. Yeah. I didn't even know how to write a rap. Yeah. I only knew how to process shit here. Mm -hmm. So when I was around and I'm watching and I'm listening to yeah. certain shit, I'm like, that nigga can't really rap. That nigga ain't really nice to me. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And when I see a nigga who, but then when I see this, so ninth grade, I'm gonna give it to you like this. Yeah. This when I first learned how to write a sixteen. Okay. That's when that's when they fucked up everything. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you a little <laughs> rundown of how I even got it. Okay. Everything yeah. I used to yeah. do, me being in dead end, fat pet hawk, and damn near entire screwed up clique was at my at my grandmother's house yeah. every day. Yeah. Every single day I seen these niggas. Yeah. Every day. I was literally at school. Screw had my drawings over his turntables. Yeah, yeah. When he was finna change over the CDs and start wanting me to draw covers. Mm -hmm. I didn't think none of them niggas could rap. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna even do shit. Right. Them niggas wasn't that nice yeah. to me. Yeah. But what was so live is that them niggas be made they self become rappers yeah. for the love of it. Yeah. And it was so live. Yeah. Hearing all y'all niggas on school, cause you niggas SPC between you, Klondike, yeah. and Point Blank and everybody. Yeah. And yeah. one nigga, I ain't gonna lie, nigga. Thanks to them. My psych. Pharaoh? Yeah, yeah. Who is that talking about that? Man, we, we gotta do it now. We gotta do we it. Gotta it. Yeah. 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 These niggas was monsters yeah. to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lyrically, 3 2, a motherfucking uh, yeah. monster. Yeah. yeah. To where I was around all this shit. Yeah, yeah. And it was inevitable that this is what I was gonna do. When I went to the north, every nigga that was the nigga there, my mama on Weaver Road. Okay. Lavender ain't nothing but three blocks. Mm -hmm. That's what street military was every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The niggas was right there. I was around Kenny Boo yeah. in Trinity Garden yeah. Yeah. every day. Yeah. Slaughter is one of my brother's yeah. best friends. Pat, Hawk, all these niggas was my brother's. Mm. Closest niggas. Right. I'm around these niggas. 
So it's like I'm around them, everything going on, but I'm not knowing what's going on. E Rock from Fifth Ward Boys, yeah. one of my yeah. favorite fucking rappers. Yeah. So I'm in ninth grade. One of the Fifth Ward juveniles, Frank Needy, was my best friend in high school. Okay. So when the nigga was telling me, like, yeah, nigga, I'm signing a rap a lot. I know he said we be in class and I'm rapping in my whole everything. I was like a fucking yeah. extraterrestrial on the north, cause I'm listening to screw tapes and niggas like the fuck is you listening to? Yeah. From middle school on up to high school. And my late nights, I'd be there in mm-hmm. school house when it wasn't no rappers. Okay. It was just street niggas at first. Yeah. And so when I get to class, nigga like, nigga, you rap? I'm like, hell yeah. So them niggas hearing me rap, we be at lunch. I be going fucking retarded. Right. The nigga like, nigga, you, you know how to write this shit? I say, nah, all this shit be right here. Mm-hmm. That nigga set me down, nigga, in class and taught me how to write a 16. Yeah. Nigga, it was over with. Right now. Yeah, right. It was over for niggas. Right. Yeah. And I know how to format it. Yeah. I know how to make different yeah. hooks, a four ball hook, to an eight ball right. hook, yeah. a 16 ball song, and me going the fuck off. Mm-hmm. It was over with for yeah. now. That's who taught me how to write a rap. And so once I got it down packed, yeah. the nigga say, so nigga, this what you want to do? I say, yeah, nigga, this really what I want to do. Next time I'm gonna put you on something. Nigga say I, I used to talk about E-Rock all the time. Yeah. This nigga take me so this is how crazy it is. So do it shot right on Lounge. Yeah, no doubt. My great grandmother house is on Lounge and Form. Okay. My yeah. grandmother's mom. Yeah. She right, she her house, this do it shot, her house right here behind it. Wow. It's two minutes of walking distance. Right. Yeah. So he say, well she meet me at, at do it shot at this here time. So I go to my house park, walk over there to home to do a shop. E Rock stand outside. He say, So nigga, you wanna rep? I say, yeah, nigga, I wanna rep. My adrenaline going so fucking crazy at this point. Yeah. It's like, nigga, this E Rock. I ain't fanned out, so I'ma just be a real stomp down nigga. Right. I open the door, do a shop. Chief, J hey, Prince. Man, they all up <laughs> Do it. Man. God damn. Yeah. Everybody sitting in this bitch, just yeah. sitting down. Yeah. What a time to show up. Yeah. That nigga say, nigga E Rock say, she a rap. Yeah, yeah, I say, I ain't say nigga rap. Man, I pull the fuck off and get stuck. Yeah. I get nervous in the bitch. Yeah. And they like, nigga, you got something, but right. you nervous than a motherfucker. Right. Man. When you get it together, come back and fuck right. with me. Right. Yeah. From net day forward, I say it's over with for niggas. Yes, right. If I went in there and wrapped them up, still niggas. You got that stamp. Yeah. yeah. got a stamp. Oh, yeah, but I got scared. scared. Yeah. Yeah. No, but they still and sad. And I said, you want to know something? After that day, I'll never be scared right. ever again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll never be that never right. again. Right, right. But you know what? That's good because... You started on the top shelf. You walk in there and then Jay and Cheating them sitting in there. They end up sitting Even if you there. got stuck, I don't know how many bars you got through before you got stuck. I got through a verse. Oh, well, you good. Because because when <laughs> a verse. it don't take people long to know. If you got yeah. it, you can spit four bars, I'm going to know. Yeah. So the point is, to your point, okay, well, I ain't scared no more because I done sat among the giants and got a stamp. Yeah. So it's it, it 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 only down here from that. And then it just took from... I didn't have no name, so my tag name was K.R. Feeling. That's yeah. what they'll be calling me. Yeah. K.R. Feeling? K.R. Feeling. That's yeah. my graffiti name. So yeah. that's what they be calling me. I, I be calling me Kyle. So the first actual album that I ever was on was my partner's beat on them out of the north side, Kyle. You, you know, my partner beat on them. My partner be Nuka, you know, free my nigga Nuka. Them the first niggas that ever put me in the in an actual What's studio about setting. Name? So um, my partner beat on them. It was um, damn, it, that, that's crazy that I forget the shit because my mind just going a thousand yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. But him and Nuki put me in the studio first, yeah. and so right after that, everybody in the hood started finding out that I could rap. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the first niggas that knew I could rap, rap was Hawk, so a lot of niggas don't know my uncle is Run G over dead in Rutgers. Okay. So that's my uncle. So Hawk started telling the nigga, man, y'all tripping Kyle can rap his motherfucking ass off. Mm-hmm. So my first actual known album that I was on was Hawk shit. First one? Yeah, I was okay. on Hawk album. Yeah, yeah. Then that's when Pokey took a liking. It was like, that nigga Kyle be going fucking stupid. Yeah. And so 
I poke it, bro. Me in and I became a part of Mob Style. Yeah. So when you I, first had a Mob Style, how many people was in there? Me, Chris Roy, Ree, Coombs, and D1. Squad, we yeah. couldn't be fucked with. Yeah, you right. That's the squad. That's a, that's a line. Yeah. Yeah. So you say Ron, you, you, uh, uh, Ron Green? Yeah, yeah, that's my dude, man. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, my uncle, man. That's, my that's my uncle, man. That's my uncle, man. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's my guy. And them man. niggas knew, but Hawk ended up tending niggas. And so Mike D, Hawk, and Pokey gave me my name. I was Kyle, so they was like, nigga, you Kyle Leon. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, I'm, I'm Kyle Leon, but I just, you know, in yeah. South Park, everybody got their own language. Right, so, right. you know, we, nigga, you Kyle Leon. Yeah. You're Kyle Leon. Right. And so right. she, I got the killer from Slim. Once yeah. I got around Slim, either the beat got killed or yeah. I killed somebody. Right. Else. So that's when they combined. Yeah. I combined killing Kanye. Man, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, boys, boys, be scared of you, man. Yeah. You know, do you do you not get a lot of uh, feature requests? Or do you, get a lot of feature? <laughs> you, you might get feature requests from people just yeah. outside of the, the game, but you got to get a lot of feature requests from other rappers that's in the game, or they be like, yeah, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, and no, because it's like niggas know what I'm gonna do, I guess. Yeah. And to the point where I ain't gonna never dumb it down. I'm gonna own my song. Yeah. Because I just felt like nigga, if a nigga ever check out, my last verse gonna be just as good as my first verse. But it's like I ain't never want I had in my mind, I ain't gonna never say the same shit twice. Yeah, yeah. I think too much, I read too much, I put too much information in my brain, you yeah. know what I mean? To so where I wanna stay on top of mm-hmm. everything, even currently. Cause I notice a lot of niggas get so caught up in a certain style, yeah. and them styles. Think about styles; they get dated. Yeah, you know what I mean. You gotta start creating rhyme schemes and rhyme patterns, and I just start seeing niggas do that. Yeah. And that was my whole thing. I ain't never want to rap the same on nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be. I wanted to sound different. And then I come from an era where you can't bite nigga style. So yeah. my thing was, I started creating flow patterns to where if I hear a nigga rap like me. You can't tell me you just start rapping yeah. like that. You got that from yeah. me. That's yeah. my whole case. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Dude, here, <him>, man. Dude, man. I'm going to do a DNA, DNA test. We might be cousins. Uh, that's what I said. I give him the K Reno award. <laughs> we, might be, we might be cousins, man. Because I do that. That'd be my, like, my signature, the way I be rapping yeah. on. When I even I rap fast, I say I want to rap fast, but I can articulate everything for yeah. me to hear it clearer. Yeah. But it's a way I'm going to rap fast that ain't going to be like how they sound. Right. I'm going to create by three, four different cadences of how I ref is. When I start hearing niggas doing it, I start laughing because I be like, that's my whole pattern. Yeah, man, you had showed up on, I want to say it's Kyle Wayne that maybe. Yeah, and you have flipped this shit out that maybe. Like, yeah, how cold, like maybe. Yeah. He, 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 he told up. But let me ask you this. Oh, when, for when did, did it come from when you started with Slim and then you got into the boss house? Out so long. pretty yeah. much, you know, around when all the north side mm-hmm. and south side shit was going on, mm-hmm. you know, Chris Wall was already fucking with Slim. Mm-hmm. And so being that we was mob style, Slim was trying to merge like a little cool ass super group of niggas from the north and south. And so being that I'm literally, it's like, I rub both of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it was like, she, war brought me over there, but every nigga that knew me, I packed the backpack. Yeah. Nothing but my pants in that bitch. Right. So when a nigga cut a beat on, I right. got some. Right. I'm, I'm like cheese. I go on everything. Right, right. There ain't gonna be not nothing. I ain't gonna go on. Boy, right. brought me over there. Them niggas cut on beats. I be. I got something for that. Yeah. They cut on another beat. I got something for that. Then when we in a group, I ain't never not want to be on no song. I'm either have a hook in my head, yeah. but I'm definitely gonna have a verse already ready. Yeah. Yeah. And and I wanted to shine. Yeah. Once I started, my whole thing was I ain't never want to rap with the little dogs. I wanted to rap with the big dogs. Yeah. I ain't never want to rap with the puppets. No matter what nigga I got around, yeah. from Poke and Hulk yeah. on, mm-hmm. niggas going to know who the fuck I am because I want to be able to stand toe-to-toe with them niggas. And I really want to go more stupid than them. Come I'm telling niggas, <laughs> I get around you, nigga. You fool. <laughs> I ain't that. On that, on that <laughs> box, I, I, that's what I was getting from because it was a couple that stand out. But you... And yeah, I think that's when I got introduced to you on oh, Boss Hog Outlaw. I got introduced yeah. to Killer. Yeah. But, but Killer was, it was like every song he's on, he'd stand out, and then it was J-Dog. Then he'd stand out and J-Dog. But then it got to the point where I seen you more consistent. You just every time. Just... So yeah. so who is Boss Hog Outlaws now? Is this, they still got everybody on there? Or? I mean, shit, yeah. whoever yeah. around is Boss yeah. Hog. If niggas is still, they still you, you know, you, they stamp on you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Boss Hog Outlaws is still Boss Hog, actively still doing shit. Yeah, right. Dog still doing shit. 
Me and right. Slim, like, we inseparable. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? We I'm the, we called each other Batman and Bruce Wayne. Yeah. We ain't no Robin. <laughs> ain't no Robin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. It be days he Batman. It be days I'm Bruce Wayne. It be yeah. days I'm Batman. He Bruce Wayne. Like, that's my brother. I love that nigga to death. Yeah. And I'm going to go to war and whatever yeah. with that nigga because that nigga took an opportunity and a chance on me. Like no other, I don't know the nigga did. That was Pope. Pope yeah. put me in the car, and they never turned no nothing on me. And I, yeah. I, I always look at him like Sensei because he a nigga that really put me in the mix. Hawk too, yeah. like to lose them niggas that believed in me yeah. when no other nigga believed in me, and to see them niggas express yeah. what it is to me. But it's just that thing with Slim. It's just when you get around certain niggas and them niggas they that's just your yin and your yang and, and also my day one fam niggas. Like I got my own cool niggas too. Yeah, right. So, you know, but to be around me and that nigga it's just it's me, him and Liz still rocking. Yeah, yeah. All the way, you know what I mean? Dog doing what he doing, dog doing his own thing. Yeah. That nigga a nigga that's just so goddamn cold because he hit your soul. No doubt yeah, about yeah. it. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, like, we didn't have yeah, him in that DC set that same shit. I love that nigga to yeah. death. We gotta get slim in here too. Yeah, yeah definitely gotta do that. Yeah. But yeah, you know, that's just that shit on my body for yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a lawyer nigga that that's yeah. just how I'm gonna rock. I remember when Pope passed, a lot of people was reaching out to Kiki because they know he had just lost his mama and then he lost this one here. But a lot of people, people don't know, but like we used to say with NOG, and you was going through it a lot. So how was you, all right, during that time? Was you okay? Uh, I'm so numb yeah. to death right yeah. now because since 2013, mm -hmm. every six months, I lost somebody near and dead to me for the past, you know, 11 years. Yeah. And my son died in my arms, bro. So, you know, my aspect on death. Yeah. Really, all I'm going to tell people is getting therapy, seeking therapy, and talking about that shit yeah. help yeah. a lot, bro. Because a lot of motherfuckers don't know we ain't been to war as soldiers, yeah. but, bro, we really out here, we really suffer from PTSD. Yeah, and a lot of and a lot of yeah. people, we, we seen... From growing up in the 80s and 90s, bro, into now seeing shit, people be like, it's worse now. I don't really think so. Because the what make what people make it worse now is you actually get to see the shit niggas yeah. went through. Because social media allow you. It's just remember back in the days, the closest shit to death if you seen it was that that, that VCR tape faces. Faces of death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram yeah, yeah. is dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That was when you seen real <laughs> traumatic shit on yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah, That was the only way. Yeah. But we actually seen so much shit like that on a daily yeah. basis to where it was normalized. Right. Yeah. You know, so, and it's like when I lost one of my best friends to cancer, my whole front line and my family to cancer, mm. it made me want to get healthy. Mm. Selling drinks, selling dope, you know what I mean? Just seeing so much shit. I seen so much shit in life, bro. The word. This is what I wanted to do. This was going to be my way up out of all this shit. Right. You know what I mean? And there's so much shit now that, that still goes on to this day. You know what I mean? I just I just lost so much, bro. Yeah. And it made me numb to so much shit. To why I ain't surprised by shit. Right. So I know how to handle shit. And I don't get into that depression. I bleed that shit through the music. I use my pen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's your, if you don't mind, what's your, um, your, your spirituality, like you, how power in terms of how power and all that. How do you? How did that connect with you and help you deal with some of the stuff? Like I mean, that? pretty much. I know it. It is a God. I don't believe in white folks, Jesus. Of course not. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just the way that I look at God. I feel like the woman God, mm -hmm. and I feel like my God gotta be if if it, if it's not a, a woman, you know what I mean? A black woman, you know. I feel like it's a high power. I think. And the way that I think for me teaching myself and me reading a lot of literature and just really doing the research, you know, growing up in the church, listening to them allegories and all that bullshit, right. yeah. when they tried to water it down, knowing that they gave black folks a different book outside of what yeah. they gave masters, where that book, the King James Version, me knowing that he used slaves to even write that. You know what I mean? For having Shakespeare in songs, I know real yeah. deep on this yeah. shit, that I don't believe in that. I believe that in them stories where they talk about us, I believe that we are the children yeah. of Abraham. Yeah, I know that for sure. We are the we are the people that they talk about that's cursed because we want to be so much like them people. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just, I believe that it's one God. And I feel like different religions, everybody got their own way that they praise praise God. But I feel like it's a way high power. Mm -hmm. Having people and seeing death and my mom dying when I was one and being resuscitated and telling me stories and seeing angels. Mm -hmm. He's losing my aunties and my uncles and they having near death experiences and talking to people and they telling me the things that they saw and they experienced, that it, it gotta be something. Right. No question. Cause this just this ain't nothing but a vessel. This Come is on. the church. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Come once on, you man. once yeah. you tap into that high power and you see you are a God. This Come you on. a God in this church. Yeah. You got to know that you are a walking God. This yeah, shit absolutely. is not scientifically it, it, it's it's crazy when I started tapping in, or when I went vegan, I started tapping into so much different shit and the ways to look at spirituality and to just see that you can pretty much cast that rapping. We this damn near form of witchcraft. You cast the spells when you speak. Yep. You know the whole word spilling. That's like exactly yeah, what yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. You are spilling yeah. when you speak. So I don't really yeah, believe right. that it's no one true religion other than us walking we are walking testimonies you know what i mean of everything i don't believe that we all came from no africa i believe we've been everywhere on this earth and everything derived from us it's crazy how you, how you said that um the two points um you know i i'm a father i'm Elijah muhammad i love mr farrakhan love him too when you was breaking that down one time the minister was talking about giving to god and he said, he might say five plus two. You might say six plus one. I might say four plus three. But it all takes you to the seven. Yeah. So the methodology, we might not be on the same page or agree on, but we all agree in that. That's it, it's goal, a goal. To get yeah. that. To get that. Yeah. And um, I was watching, um, that last night, man, this is crazy you said that. Uh, I was watching uh, 19 Keys and uh, Dr. Westley, and they were talking about the same thing you just said, how... Africa has always been credited with being just that that hub, that birthplace of civilization and all that. But there's been evidence that shows that our existence was here, it was everywhere. Yeah, long before even what we see in Kemet, long before the pyramids and all that. Because um, like I'm Elijah Muhammad, we call it the earth, but he refers to the earth as Asia. Not Asia meaning like whether the Chinese, just the whole planet is referred to as Asia. And that whole planet, this whole planet belongs to us because we are the original people on this planet. So it was just funny hearing you say that. And um, I couldn't do nothing but shake my head like, yeah, but because um, we, we've been given such a watered down version of what is, in a generic version yeah. of what is, that it makes us stop and not go into the the layers and the depths of who we really are. Yeah, it's more it's more pyramids in America than it is without anywhere. A doubt, yeah, without a doubt, right out of doubt, man. Without a doubt, you know the the cities that they speak of, the Jerusalem's and all that was in South America. Yeah. When they talk about Atlantis, we Atlanteans. We, from what I'm from what I read and just doing my history, we not even of this planet. Yeah. Our blood type is extraterrestrial. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just so many things. By we children of the sun, we illuminated light. You know what I mean? It's just so much we can go so deep on, but spirituality, I'm very much so in tune and tapped in to that to where I, I lose some people sometimes. I want yeah, I, and I wanted to ask you that because I didn't know all you know, you saying all the people that you lost and all that. You got to have some kind of connection to, to a source that that recharges your battery, your spiritual and your mental battery just to be able to keep sanity. Yeah, I'm raised so much different. Yeah, you know what I mean. You got a lot of people that's raised out love, and you got a lot of people that's raised out survival. Yeah. I wasn't raised out survival. Right. You know what I mean. I ain't never had it. I grew up with love, intimacy, right. mentally in the home, being told I love you. Right. When my father wasn't there, it was other other uncles and role models that showed me love. Right. I only struggled based off my own mental struggles, like right. me having a want for shit. I ain't never want for yeah. nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I done seen the highs and the lows. Yeah. But yeah. it's like. I don't know what keep, and I'm going to say the word blessing me, you know what I mean, to reach certain yeah. heights. And, and I feel like I got guardian angels. Yeah. I feel like it's it's something seeing me through life. 
and helping me get to these points because I might not have made it right here, but the fact that I'm still actively in it, yeah. I know it's something helping me and pushing me through, and I feel like no doing it. Yeah. Well, you know, um, sometimes up here is, is, is an illusion. 100%. Because there are people who have been up here, but they didn't stay up here for whatever reason. And if they were up there 30 years ago, but they didn't stay long, we don't even remember who they are. Yeah. But the consistency that you have established being here, so-called here or here or here or here, that has put you in the echelon where your legacy is so set that it Forget up here. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, everybody look at that. That spot to me is just financial, and that shit is illusion, just like you said, mm -hmm. because they pick and choose who they want to go. Yeah, and, and, and it ain't safe up there. Yeah, it, it ain't, ain't safe. safe. It's, you know, it's, it's, but you it's gotta, sick up there. Yeah. One thing that I always remember is when I read and I and I get in my literature, when I go into those books, mm -hmm. the devil was the leader of heaven's choir. Yep, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And musically, that was his way of finessing everything. Yeah, yeah, and on his back. me yeah. seeing and reading so much, I know that that shit is to be true because I seen some of the crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Now, all the stories that they like to tell now, but they speaking on people like Diddy and they speaking on so many people. Mm -hmm. I know that ain't nothing but the beast doing all this shit simply because they don't want us in no positions of power right. like them. Right. And it's just like Malcolm X said, media ain't nothing but propaganda. They make the innocent look guilty and they can make the guilty look, look innocent. innocent. Yeah, no question about just it. Just like seeing OJ dying today, yeah. where we can still see the division from the powers that be. That man went in there in the judicial system, granted him being not guilty. Yeah. And they still saying their power, which media is so powerful. That's why my next project, like I did a project called the Lorraine, Mo Lorraine Motel. Okay. And where I go to speaking on blackness social and, issues. and, and yeah. social issues yeah. that I, I, I've had a part two for years now. And I just didn't release it because they don't allow you to deliver messages in the music no more because that was our way of delivering messages. Me looking at a panel with Cool Mo D and KRS One mm -hmm. when they start showing the shift yeah. in hip hop, we always had messages yeah. in hip hop. Exactly. Yeah. But once they start seeing the messages was getting knocked down, though, you were getting people. I'm not gonna say woke. I'm gonna say conscious. Yeah. You seen people's consciousness when you seen the five percenters within rap. Yeah. When you seen people being educated on their blackness and they didn't want us to be there. Yeah. They used hip hop like Cointel Pro. They started going into hip hop and started saying, Nah, we need this type of music because we need to keep niggas mentally right here, on, so yeah. we can goddamn we keep these prisons full. Come on, man. We can get niggas away from that financial. Their yeah. financial standpoint, they can get to and use this shit, but they can they can keep awakening too many young people. Yeah. In the late eighties, within the nineties, when they brought that, Cube even told you that they had the CIA had psyops yeah. to create gangster rap. Right. Where they come in there and they come in there and tell you what to rap right. and what you need to do, but it wasn't controlled. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know if hip hop was gonna even last yeah. as long. Yeah. When when I looked at Cool Mo D, when I looked at the Furious Five. When I looked at Boogie Down Productions, when I looked at Kane, when I looked at Kwame, when I looked at Gangstar, yeah. all these dudes was teachers, poor righteous teachers. Yeah. These dudes was really passing wisdom on. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't really, we talked about gangster shit, but it was just like painting a Scorsese yeah. film. It wasn't never that we glorified on, it. We yeah. talked about where we was from and what we was going through like movies. Exactly. And you got people to a sense where they confuse brothers like, hey, you, know, you really need to keep talking about that, but you really need to start acting in on it. Yeah. You need to get in that bishop character. Yeah. Like, they they fucked over pop mentality like that. So when they brought pop in, but pop started seeing it was fucked up. Yeah, yeah. And the influence that a Tupac had, the Biggie had, yeah. well, you can damn near tell it, bro. They was too powerful. Yeah, so yeah. we got to get control of that. Yeah. I seen what, like, I'm watching the, uh, the Young Thug case right now. And it's basically. They, that same mentality, but then they put the phone in front of you and say, go tell them yourself. Go take all these pictures about yourself. Go tell everything about the game. Go record it. Go run around and see it. And now they're in the middle of court and they just saying, this is what they you trying to, they, yeah. they taking us back again. They're yeah. trying to use the lyrics against us. But see, what they did was 
they manipulated the, the youth in the believing that. See, I tell people this. Mm-hmm. I'm killer Kyle Young when it's time to be killer Kyle Young. And outside of that, I'm Kyle. Mm-hmm. That's a that I, I look at that as like that's my alter ego. That's yeah. I'm in character when I do that. Cause ain't no way I'm gonna make it this point still trying to glorify all this right. shit here, bro. I'm mm-hmm. an author. Right. Exactly, exactly. And these are my stories. Right. And I know I can incriminate myself in certain things, but Ain't no way a millionaire and a man having that much money gonna want to still be connected to all this shit like that because you got to think when you go back into the jungle and you done made it out the jungle and you want to go back, you still fool yeah, to the wolves. Say, yeah. Yeah. So you got to understand that you can still reach and teach. You know what I mean? But you got to understand you bigger than certain shit now to where the shit that we, we would never glorify this yeah. shit. It was normalized to us because we grew up amongst this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these young niggas don't understand that they feel like they got to be in character all day. Yeah. I'm this character. Yeah. And it got to be on film. Man. And you sitting yeah. up here now, it's like you got a camera. Yeah. Now you want to put your monkey suit on. Yeah. And when you put the monkey suit on, yeah. once you paint it, now they feel like, oh, that's, that's really you. Yeah. No, nah, no, sir. This is a character. That's two power. Yeah. This, uh, this this is a character. I ain't no different from Arnold Schwarzenegger. I Rambo and Commando killed more motherfuckers yeah. than any yeah. rapper can ever kill. Right. And he can be the governor. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you mean to tell me I can write these books and write these stories and talk these stories and you want to go investigate that to use that against me, but then you got the powers that be they're selling this man and that's his yeah. CEO. Not even Lucian yeah. Grange ain't came to a courtroom yeah, yet to speak yeah. for that man. Yeah, that's a that first. Ain't a yeah. white yeah. man yeah. came in there yeah. yet. Leo talked that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Leo ain't came in the courtroom. It ain't, it ain't coming. It ain't coming. Yeah. See, the, the man thing told is, you, and I don't yeah. need to cut no, you no, off. No, no, this you, this that you. man came. Talk on the it. breakfast club in front of the man yeah. <laughs> and told you yeah, I ain't it. gonna stop them from doing that. That's how we made money. I got a family to feed. I'm like, ooh. That's That's man. Cold man. Yeah. And, and then yeah. they turn around and what, what fucked me up is yeah. see, this what they don't get what's going on. Them niggas ain't want Dame Dash in the offices. Well, you can dig it right in my head. When yeah. Dame was yeah. in there sunning them motherfuckers, man, fuck you. Yeah. We don't need yeah. you. Right. What they do? They we t- don't need you. Yeah. We just need your bread. Right. We don't need you to tell us nothing come about on. our fucking culture. Come on. Yeah. We don't need you for that. Yeah. We need, You want to come in and get a piece of the power of this culture? That's cool. But you're not finna dictate right. what's the culture. Right. Yeah. They got, to me, they got in the whole head on yeah. the money side. See, they ain't wanted to keep that real nigga, that real nigga sense to what nigga we, we run the culture. Yeah. We don't need them now. Them white folks ain't never been to the hood. Yeah. They hood experiences through us. That's what the umbrella was all about, man. Yeah. And they yeah. put them niggas against each yeah. other. And what they did, just like Malcolm said, they want to come in and use propaganda to yeah. keep us. They want to create, they want to divide and conquer. That's all they want to do. Puffy got too much money. That nigga kicked them folks' ass and got them millions from racial discrimination. Mm-hmm. You know what they gonna do? They gonna put millions into these PR firms yeah. and make that nigga look fucked up. What we seeing today, OJ just died. <clears throat> that man innocent. These motherfuckers come around and use their power in media. Yeah. They don't talk about none of the good this man did. None of the wrestling titles. None of them. You know, OJ Simpson that's responsible when that was acquitted on the murder of Ron Goldman and Nicole Kidman. And they put that out there. Nobody ever seen Puffy mess with no boy. Nobody never seen Puffy sexual assault nobody. Everything is a allegation. But they're gonna use the media to perpetuate everything and to make a, a man that ain't even guilty as shit look guilty. So when they do come up with charges, they done already manipulated the judge or jury into believing you guilty. So look what OJ did. They stole OJ memorabilia. Yeah. When he went to court, white man admitted that shit to date. Yeah. The man, Harvey, I can't think his name over TMZ. He admitted yeah. that shit on TMZ. Oh, yeah. When they did that, um, when he went to his court case, the judge already had it in his mind. We're going to hang this nigga yeah. because we didn't get him for the murder. Right. So yeah. now, since he in that standing, he didn't kidnap somebody and rob him. He'll go 30 years. Yeah. And Off manip- media manipulation. 
And if everybody yeah. feel like you're yeah. guilty and they couldn't find them guilty, we're gonna find ways to make you guilty when you and, a nigga and, 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 and to appease that, that white that, public yeah. that was so aggravated that they didn't get him the first time. So they found that, okay, we'll get him this next time. On yeah, this and they couldn't separate yeah. his pension from him. So they, they couldn't, couldn't take, take their money from him. Yeah, yeah, that 25 yeah. grand a month. <laughs> they, 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 they couldn't take it. Yeah. No, they couldn't get that either. And, and um, But you know, that's always been the script that they use on black. When Kobe passed away, so yeah. they yeah. went straight to, to the, the allegation. They, to they, the allegation. And, and, and they, they use, they get black people to do it. Yeah, they, get a black they use our own people to do it. Yeah. Time. Yeah. So that, that, that's always been but one of the main plays in, in the book. So we got to recognize that. and recognize That's that Stockholm people. Syndrome. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. That Willie Lynch yeah. Syndrome. Yeah. Same thing with DMX. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. exactly. The first yeah. thing, look, yeah. it, it even goes into the, the depths of if you just a victim that was murdered by the police, some racist white police, they start looking for things on the black victim to say, well, he got Look at what they're doing to George Floyd. Yeah, same same yeah. scenario. Because Straight up found this man guilty, say that it was a homicide, but they want to say, oh, he was on fentanyl. Right. That's not what killed him. The chokehold yeah. didn't kill him. Yeah. The fentanyl. He already yeah. had a bad heart. He had, because yeah. they, they never want to assume accountability for what for they nothing. did. For nothing. But look what they do. Yeah. What they did to Tamir Rice. Yeah. What they did with Trayvon Martin. Yeah. This, this man going got on. whole goddamn. He goes and does panels talking yeah. about how he killed this okay. kid. And it's cool. Wow. Because he had because he got a backing. He got see, a backing. See, when, when you gotta stand, so, you can go, you can go to um, Zimmerman, you can go to uh, Dylan Roof. No. Yeah. You can go to any Kyle of these Rittenhouse. Murders, Rittenhouse. Anytime they commit the acts they commit, you automatically see a big fundraiser for their legal fees. fees. Yeah. Millions of dollars raised for killing when the you know and they know that they give you the doing. Yeah. 100%. So, so it's, it's the backing that they have and, and just this, this whole white supremacist system that we live under in America that, you know, the quicker we understand that this, the playing field ain't level for us. Exactly. Then the, 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 the better we'll be off in terms of getting free from it. Because yeah, we sitting around waiting it's on us. Yeah. It's us though too. You know, when I look at hip hop do a complete change. Yeah. Yeah. When when in the 80s and the 90s, we only wore our coach. We wore African symbols. Yeah. We we wore the Kente cloth. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we was wore proud of We yeah. wore none Kubu. but black label. So yeah. you know what they did? They bought into that shit not to appreciate it. They bought it to depreciate it. Yeah. Because they they labels weren't making money. Now look. They got all these black men doing gay shit, yeah, man, gay wearing man. all that bullshit. Now we don't wear nothing black, black on no more. They got FUBU in Walmart, all this shit. Now they depreciated it so much when it was so appreciated to where they made the culture like, hey, don't rap about that no more. We gonna yeah. give you some Gucci and Louis. Rap about this shit. Yeah. The shit yeah. that we made live that niggas was wearing when they was dead broke because they felt like that's what you had right. to look like. Yeah. But we came and we wore the baggy clothes. Now nah, this shit cool to do. Yeah. But it just ain't cool to do with no urban shit. Yeah. They gonna make all that high-end shit the urban shit now. And yeah. they had niggas feeling like they gotta wear this. Right. What well, can't no black label even exist? What well, we gonna do, we gonna get a nigga like for real to come support our yeah. shit. Yeah. But all you gotta do is not even fuck with they shit. Start another call Kanai. Come on. Start another FUBU. Yeah. Start another Nietzsche. Start another used jeans. Start all these black labels again. Look how they, they wait 50 years to come get Dapper Dan to do exactly. shit. When Dapper Dan was already making that shit, now yeah. they got all Dapper Dan old designs like yeah. it's new designs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we always been, see, see, the white man is a scientist, bro. And we've always been made to believe that they ice is cold. Yeah. So that's why I think about what you're saying. I think about the interview with Kanye and Sway. And what Sway was trying to tell Kanye, hey man, just you Kanye where to start your own. Yeah. Yeah. And Kanye say, yeah, but it ain't Ralph. Yeah. Like this, like because yeah. it's Ralph Lauren, it validates it. But he started make it be. Man. But he great. seen it when he went in there trying to fuck with him. Yeah. They fucked him. Right. Forty million, and, you know. And he got yeah. and he yeah. and he Come seen. On, and he now said, he, but he what I like right. when he woke up, yeah. they tried to make him crazy. Right. I, but I, then, I, they then they scared him. Then they scared him. Nigga, you not crazy, but you know what? 
you all, let, let's put us a side out with this nigga. Yeah. This nigga done got too much influence. This nigga that woke up. Right. This nigga that went in these rooms. See, what I liked about Kanye, that nigga went in them rooms and he had no business going in. Yeah. And when that nigga got in them rooms, he started seeing shit he wasn't supposed to see because he played along so good. Thank God. When they started seeing shit, when that nigga started seeing shit, Nigga, y'all playing me. Yeah, yeah. What a nigga say, we gonna put you now, nah, we gonna take you away from the white girl. Yeah, the nigga straight up said, bro, I was in the sunken place. Yeah. That shit, get out, really is real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All of Jordan Poole yeah. movies yeah. are oh, really yeah. real. Yeah. To the yeah. point where yeah. he say, they put him with the cracker. Yeah. The nigga yeah. made the cracker more live than she yeah. ever was. Yeah. Yeah. But now, that nigga, they used it, they used his influence, his influence. To get them crackers ain't have no style and grace. That nigga gave them that. But once he started seeing everybody was playing, that nigga said, wait a minute, wait, something ain't right. Now that nigga went into the mentality, he started putting out that slave shit. But now nigga, y'all showing me I'm a nigga. Mm -hmm. Then once he started going into that zero dog dirty shit, the nigga ran to God. Yeah. But now that nigga seen, let me use my influence to preach love. Yeah. They start seeing he was wrong for that. Yeah. I and mean, if you can't see devils yeah, with that nigga, yeah, now yeah. they went it back yeah. to where, nah, this nigga crazy. Yeah, yeah. Let's put this nigga with this trainer yeah. that worked for the goddamn CIA. Yeah. Let's get this nigga on some MK Ultra type shit yeah. and get yeah, into this nigga brain, brain yeah, yeah. and make this nigga crazy again. And, then, and, and now he down. And right, because the thing <laughs> is, man, we, yeah. we got to know, man, uh, sometimes it ain't about me telling you what's behind that door. Cause I could tell you all day long and you don't take to it until you go behind that they door. They don't. Yeah. Then you go, okay, yeah, you was right. Yeah. You know, you was right. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a thing. That's why I was talking about up here. It ain't safe up here. It ain't. It's not safe up here. Even if your mind is right, you they're, can't they're even corrupt. Live. They'll corrupt the, the most solid mind. Yeah. You know, so you got you got For that dollar. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you the influence. Yeah. Man, yeah. listen. Yeah. What I love about me, I can go any motherfucking well. Yeah. And everybody know who I am, right. but I ain't got to be isolated. Right. Look at the Beyonce. Can't go nowhere. Yeah. You, you can't even be yeah. normal. Yeah. You going to shut down everything around you. And if somebody want to get a piece of you just because of who or what you yeah. are, you're not even comfortable within your skin. Yeah. You too goddamn famous. Yeah. Michael yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Paranoia. Yeah. Yeah. Look at how they tried to do Mike. Yeah, come on. Prince. Man. Talk about it. Yeah. Kill these Let's men. Go. Let's go. This man ain't die. Hold on. Say that. Say yeah. that. Repeat that. They, die. they assassinated They did what? They the assassinated. They assassinated uh, them. Yeah. Yeah. Because one of them. Yeah. Not even just yeah. the man owned them white folks. The man owned 90% of something. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. the man started getting woke. What they didn't know, the man went Muslim. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And and the education, he started getting the education. Especially with Mike, Mike was what Prince was going in. Prince wrote slave on his face, yeah. and Prince was getting ready to teach all these artists that they didn't need that shit. That's right. why he say he don't like social media. And, and he got off the labels, and he started releasing his own music on his own. He, he started making. He had so many innovative ways to sell his own music without incorporating the labels, man. All the streaming and, and, service. And what you think they were sitting in the office doing while Prince was doing all that? We gotta get rid of this. We gotta get rid of this nigga. You know? And okay. then he started to get that. Then. They had a life insurance policy on this man. This yeah. man that never did no drugs, no none of that, yeah. and to say he overdosed on pills when he died riding his bike. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. See, and 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 that he put a life insurance policy on everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Only rappers. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Yeah. and Prince wouldn't do yeah. no no yeah. no no songs with you unless you own your shit. Yeah, no, he, he he was in yeah. full control. They see the the biggest threat. To that, to this establishment is somebody who understands how it works, and yeah. understands how to tear it down. So, the, so we we had a, a brother in here um, last week. We were talking about the streaming and how they don't pay for the streams and all that. And Still I just game. posed a question to him, and I said, "Well, what if? Forget every other genre. What if all the rappers just said we're not releasing no music on any of these streaming platforms for like a year?" And what kind of hit would they take? They're going to take a major hit because that's how they're making the money right now. Right. They done manipulated these rappers into believing like, oh, you streamed a billion. Yeah. There's pennies on the dollar. You ain't made no money. You made yeah. them all the money. Yeah. Yeah. Not even pennies on the dollar. It's just like the 360. They had yeah. to figure, once the South really fucked up hip hop. And I'm going to tell you with our independence and when I be, and I able to cut off the map. 
Yeah. To where we was cool with the chitlin and circuit. We mastered it. The yeah. chitlin and circuit was our audience where y'all didn't want us to work it. Yeah. Well, why do you think, bro, mm. when they show you every movie, every documentary, a Jewish man is in the building yep. for anything on, on rap? Yeah, no doubt. Zion is Jewish, though. Yeah. Yeah. On control of the shit. They couldn't even, they, they tried to make it like they were our friends, they was our equal, yeah, yeah, they and can. they need to come yeah. in there from Cadillac Ruggers, mm -hmm. all that shit. And then you seen a J Prince, you seen a Master P, you start seeing these right. dudes get all this money in this area and this independence where we didn't need a label. When we went to Interscope, me and Slim them, we already had motion. Come on, yeah. We didn't need y'all for nothing. Optional. But it's just to get over here and see it, that when we got it now, they played everybody against each other. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Couldn't none of these, Mike Jones, Chameleon, Powwow, Slim, them niggas couldn't even do records together. Mm. They wouldn't even clear these niggas that was in a whole group wow. on Switch House. When they got major deals, they couldn't even do music with each other. They had to get clearances to do shit that they did with each other because they didn't even understand how our music worked out. Right. Yeah. They didn't even know how to target the audience. Wow. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But yeah, swing. yeah, nah, they just didn't know how to target the audience and that niggas was getting all this money without their help. Right. How's y'all doing right. that? Right, right, right. Screw. Yeah. How's y'all doing that yeah. shit? Yeah. yeah. Never needed. And that and that put me in a sense, once I didn't get another deal, I'm like, I don't need the motherfucker. Right. I got a whole audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. That I'm living and eating out for a rap, pay for everything I own. Yeah. All yeah. this shit is rap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is my vocals. Right. And me targeting my whole core audience when you look at like currency, which is one of my partners. Yeah. Man making millions off his core audience. Yeah. You don't yeah. need no deal. Yeah. All you need is. Yeah. Is your fans right. and long and technology that made it to where you can directly you can get to this consumer directly. Yeah, yeah. You can feed all you gotta do is feed your audience and your audience get you more fans. Right. That's really all you need. You don't need them crappers for nothing. The key yeah. word you said was was core. Yeah, core you got a core audience. You get a core audience, those are the ones that's gonna be with you. Forever. Forever. The fly by night. So, okay, Kyle, they all got a hit record that's playing. Okay, this going to be some latch on again, but they going to come and go. Yeah. That core is going to be there, and that's what's going to sustain you. I tell artists all the time establish your core and then figure out how to consolidate them and keep them in yeah, one place. Yeah, keep them in one place. Keep them in one place. You, you, you good. You good for forever. Yeah, 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 no question about it. I wanted to ask you about something we was talking about off camera because you yeah. asked me in the elevator and you said, man, what you think about the J. Cole and, 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 and the Kendrick thing? And, um, I give my take on it, then I let you go right here. Um, I don't really know. I don't even know how it started, so I'm not gonna give a long rant about like I'm tell you. burst in it. Give me the give me the short version. Give me the short version. Kendrick went went on there and you know, kind of dissed him and him and Dre. That's it. So then that ain't really how that. So yeah. So okay. What's your what's your, what's your version of it? That's not a habit. This just like any other, see, that, this shit was never going to no street shit. It's about who the better rapper, which is the essence of hip hop. Yeah. Well, you gotta look at the bridge is over. Yeah. Them niggas wasn't finna do no fighting. Okay, okay, Them niggas okay. Wasn't, it's now, let, lyricism. Let, let, okay, well, let me, let me get right there, because I don't want to get Go ahead. Right <laughs> okay, no, because I'm, I'm with you. Go right. The point you said yeah. about they not gonna do no fighting, nothing violent was gonna come out of that. No. That's where I was going. If if this is just rap, who the best rap is, who gonna establish supremacy? All the words. Then let's go. Yeah. That's where it was. If it's if it's beyond that, then that's different. The way a lot of these rappers getting killed, these young guys getting killed. So if, I don't know why Cole apologized. You know, I've read different things, but I don't know. I will say, if somebody may have felt some kind of way or felt like it's gonna get like that. And you felt like apologizing can simmer that down because that, that man. It was shit that he was go. saying, and I don't mean to take yeah. it. Yeah. This is what I know for sure. Drake and Cole come from white folks. <laughs> they got white folks in their family. Mama, yeah. dad is. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar, a real gangster. Okay. They, they just happened to make it out of there. Yeah. He really, from the depths of Compton, he really right. lived in a war zone and really is from that. Okay. Them two not from there. So let me ask you this. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask you this. So if 
And I'm, I don't know. Yeah. Trust me, I have yeah, I'm no clue. I'm going to on what I'm, what Teach I'm saying. Teach me. I don't know. Yeah. If Cold is thinking, well, man, if I keep coming back at this dude, it might go somebody somewhere. else might, the, uh, somebody in the streets might not look at it as just rap. Yeah. So in that case, let me diffuse that. That's bullshit. He I'm, got some competition. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is, you've been seeing on every feature, yeah. every song, I can play a plethora of them, mm-hmm. where you hear them. You, out, of, out of the big three, I'm Muhammad Ali. This come out of his mouth. Who? J. Cole. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? On first person shooter. Yeah. Drake always aiming at everybody that he better than everybody. Yeah. Cole started doing it. You isolated y'all. You isolated the three of y'all. The big three come from J. Cole. Yeah. That they're the big three. Since Kendrick made control, I am the best, greatest rapper alive. He been yeah. saying that. Yeah. And it's just like LL and Kumo cool D. Yeah. LL felt like he was the baddest motherfucker on earth with that, right. with that rap. We come up right. on that type of right. shit. That's what it is. The bullshit come from these youngsters. Cole, you start talking about pulling guns and all that in your verse, and yeah. we got stippers that's like this here, and I'm a click click by directed like, at Kendrick or just in saying general? it in, in, in his verse in general and start talking about, but that's a part of battle rapping. Yeah. But at the same time, that's the way rap go. Now Kendrick was straight on. I am nigga. Fuck the big three, nigga. It's just big me. Yeah. He don't give a damn about you, Drake. He said on interviews, he, and he said it on Control. He say. He named every rapper that's the nigga, but he saying, nigga, I'm trying to murder you niggas. I'm trying to rap like I ain't never heard of you niggas. Yeah, 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 and he I, said I, that, I and that. he put his footprint in the sand to y'all, my yeah. niggas, but I'm trying to be better than yeah. you niggas. No. That nigga named everybody, and you got a nigga like Drake that feel like he down, so he took that and ran. Yeah. Big Sean felt the way that he shitted on him, he took that and ran, and it's been about rapping for, for Kendrick and it's been about rapping with him Drake and that them niggas isolated themselves nigga we the big three Cole made that that so she when you get up there and you been shooting saying you the better alright so this is straight rap we know that this is rap in the hip hop community we know it's rap yeah. so now we ain't giving a damn about the trolls the fans and no none of that yeah. we have established as hip hop this is the essence of hip hop yeah. this nigga get up there and apologize and say the lamest shit I could have did was say that you knew it was lame when you wrote the rap. Yeah. When you been seeing it, so this is what we can't do. You can't even bring yourself to the barbecue saying you that no more. Yeah. Until you rap, because you saying you this, this is the essence of hip hop. Yeah. You got to rap. Ain't no apologizing. Yeah, well, I, I said, I don't know. I have no. This clue. Sparta, bro, you I'm a learning. Learning. I'm learning. I, I, cause I'm it a, ain't really nothing I'm to learn. A, I'm going to make, con- make, con- nah, make a confession that y'all might think I'm, y'all going to say talk crazy. I don't even really listen to you. I don't. I right on, I and that's cool. Song, that's cool. I don't really know. Yeah, the, the but they ill. Yeah. But he, he ill. Do this every every yeah. couple of years. He's but it ain't about it. But see, this is what I need everybody. So you say he started. You say he did. Well, Kim, no, no, Kendrick will shoot all the time. Yeah, because that's what he names, does. Names though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He gonna say names. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And the thing <laughs> is, he let you know he an elite MC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He come from the MC, right, and right, he tell you. His two favorite MCs is M and Ho. Right, right, right. And the essence of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's <laughs> a part of the essence of what hip hop really is. Yeah. Cole tried to make it like, that's what you realize. Like, you got to compete. We not trying to hear no apologies. Yeah. That's the weakest shit you could have did yeah. as an MC yeah. in a battle. You tucked your tail. So you saying from just a pure hip hop standpoint. That's right? all it is. Okay, so what if it's a, I'm devil's advocate. What if it's a fear like that? I'm like, I can't go to Cali no more. I better clean this up. I don't up. believe it's that. It's just he, he going to use his spirit to yeah. say and manipulate everybody. You took a chance. Ain't no way if you my nigga and we know that this straight hip hop, yeah. nigga, I'm unplugging the right. microphone. Yeah, no doubt. Just like Marl and Rory said, I'm good. Yeah. I nigga, you they can't put your Joe button. You can't. The, all these niggas that feel like they MCs. Yeah. Every MC yeah. from Simba. I don't know if you listen to Simba, one of the coldest, nah. new coldest yeah, young yeah, niggas. Yeah. These I'm, some I'm young it, niggas man. you need I'm to. About, I'm about to lose. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. These, I'm, some, these I'm, some young niggas yeah. that you really need to listen to. Yeah. These little young niggas is yeah. some speakers. Right, right. They some li- they 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 hip hop. Yeah. yeah. They the essence. They they really sharp and they swords and they tongues is sharp. Well, I will say this. If we talking about just rap, essence of rap and hip hop, battling head to head, you gotta go for it, bro. Yeah. You, you got you, to. You can't, you can't, you can't. 
if it's some type of air of danger, life threatening. And it wasn't none of that. If it ain't none of that, you got to get down, bro. Yeah. You got to get down. You got to get that, down. That, that just how it is. So just I hide. think everybody trying to manipulate it and play it because we in this soft ass era yeah. of insecurities. Yeah. And what I tell people, the internet was made by nerdy shitheads that couldn't make friends mm -hmm. and they were socially awkward. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was socially awkward. Yeah. So you don't have to you don't have to socialize in person. So they created a platform for people where you got other like-minded nerds and motherfuckers that just geeks that yeah. they're socially awkward, that don't know how to make friends. They created a platform for you to make friends yeah. without having to actually meet people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so everybody that was the bullies that we grew up, if you got ranked on, they calling you ranking yeah, bully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your ass need to know yeah. how to rank. Yeah. When, when you fought, when you ain't have to worry about catching no bully, yeah. you better jump your ass yeah. out there and fight. Win or lose. So what they did yeah. now, all the ones that scared to fight, yeah. don't know how to tell jokes, yeah. they don't know how to make friends, they've created a whole highway yeah. Yeah. for these people right. to where they're in control of all of the, the, the cool kids that we was, yeah. now they they now they the cool kids and they control this. We can talk about you, but you can't talk about us. Right, yeah. Everybody just socially that's awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we like can talk about folks. you, but you can't talk about me. That's sound like some other folks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 that's what it is. We want to be a part of the cool shit, but when the cool shit too cool for us, we don't want to be cool no more. Yeah. All right, we finna power trip now. Now nah, y'all can't do that. Right. Now we hitting the report button. Now you got a report button yeah. where you can't <laughs> say certain yeah. shit. Yeah. Now they got it to where you can't even tell the truth. You can't pass Ooh. information. That's not right. Like, no like you familiar. can't do no healing. Yeah. If you selling any healing products or anything no. to heal, can't they flagging your ass. Can't if you if you speak truth to power like Reza, Reza is one of my guys that I yeah. listen to yeah. because yeah. I love Reza to death. To where Reza was telling everybody, these motherfuckers lying, these motherfuckers yeah. lying. Right. Now we finna stop him from talking. Yeah. So now it double back. Reza, we gotta apologize to you because yeah. you was telling the well, truth. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. They still got him on the White House list. Teaching. Yeah, he's yeah, still on the White House list. Teaching, man. For teaching. You can't even yeah. teach. You got to teach ignorance. Yeah. Shake your ass. Be a nigga. Yeah. Hold your money. Yeah. That's what we want to see. Yeah. That, right, that, right. That's, that's, the, yeah. that's the agenda, though. You know, they put us on autopilot to destroy ourselves through those means. And it's still yeah. there. Still and it's, that. it's far more worse now yeah. Yeah. because yeah. niggas feel like they got to put the monkey suit on yeah. to be seen. Come on. And then I got to out monkey you. Come yeah, on. I got to out monkey you. And then trying to take yeah. my monkey spot, yeah. man. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah. Nah, nah, man. You teaching, bro. You teaching, yeah. man. Killer Collion just, just breaking it down. Drop the jewels. Dropping. Yeah. Drew, man, he dropping bombs, man. And, and um, what else you got going on? Anything we need to know about before we get you out of here, man? I'm pretty much, man, just finna cut this shit up a notch. Yeah. Uh, uh, more than that, man. One of my brothers in hip hop really inspired me to keep pushing in my days when I be feeling like, damn, is this shit ever gonna get to where I am? Because my thing is, bro, I appreciate the flowers that everybody give, but I'm not where I wanna be in right, this right, shit. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Until I know that I'm where I want to be, I feel like I'm just as equal as everybody else, and I got to keep going. And it's, I feel like I got so much more gas in the tank, yeah. and I got so much shit to give this, to, to give this game. Like, I've been in relationships, and nobody can seem to understand that I love this shit more than I love yeah. anything. Yeah. I love it equivalently to my children. And I love it like my mama to the point it's like an itch I ain't even scratched. Yeah, to why I love this shit so much. To where everybody be looking, they feel like you gotta be a jack of all trades, but I'm trying to master this shit. Right. Cause once this shit mastered, this shit opened up other doors. Right. I don't need yeah. to try to use this to walk in a door. I need to use this to open up other right. doors. Yeah. I need to be in them conversations. I wanna be in that Hall of Fame. Yeah. I wanna be mm -hmm. noted, but I still wanna do shit that I see on that level. Like, I know the Grammys is a political thing. Yeah, we yeah. all know this yeah. shit. Ain't shit but politics. Industry you know what I'm yeah. saying? However, but, yeah, you I know, know yeah. at the end of the day, to see a brother that's really a lyrical giant yeah. and he's a humanitarian yeah, yeah. and he's active in the community yeah, and yeah. he's teaching. Come on, man. He's to, come on. To get in that yeah. position yeah. at 48, 49 yeah. years old. Come on, man. And he doing shit that 20 year olds can't yeah, even do right that's now. Right. That's right. It ain't over. They tried to marginalize us 
and try to put an age. Them people try to come put an age in it yeah. so they can try to come take the shit. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, then they want you to be a certain age so they can manipulate you. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, you too old to do this. Yeah, Nigga, this ain't basketball. Well, you too old to do it. And you, you know better. Too old to do it yeah. because you know better. Yeah. And the, the the steps that you might have went through at 19, 20 years old, they can't pull that on you now. Right they, on. They can't do that now. So, yeah, you weed all the old dudes out now because they know about publishing. Yeah. You can't pull that on them. They know about uh, 360 deals and scam they, contracts. And yeah. All that. I can't pull that on them. So, y'all are too old. Yeah. But I could bring 19, 20, but what 19, I want, 19, what I want still, to do, y'all let steal y'all money forever. My thing is, bro, I feel like we need to start when we get influenced. We need to go repair the infrastructure in the hood. Yeah, we need to go back and teach these kids the shit that they're not teaching because school ain't shit but a prison. Come on, man. Yeah. And now that I'm seeing, I'm raising my kids and I'm seeing how they trying to unlearn them from the from the real basic ways of seeing right. shit. Yeah. What they teaching now, I got two nine-year-olds, bro. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make them not understand the old ways because the old way is the correct way. They trying to unlearn them yeah. to teach them a different way. In school, they teach you how to do nothing but be a worker. That's right. That's it. Yeah. Come a, on, a slave. Yeah. Come on. Really be able to, to, to be a slave. Yeah. Everybody they show you every day with their brightest stars. Mm -hmm. Everybody that run the world right now don't have a college degree. Come on, man. Nah. Yeah. Steve Jobs dropped out of college. Yeah. Bill Gates dropped out of college. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of college. Oh, is that a president? Or was it uh, Donald Bezos Trump? dropped out yeah. of college. Yeah. Donald yeah. Trump didn't get a college yeah. degree. He the president. And Donald Trump tell you yourself. He just say, he say, I'm not smart. I'm not the smartest person in this room, but I am the smartest person in the room because I hired the smartest person in the room. And and see, that's what people don't understand. Yeah. What they don't understand, like scientists. Mm -hmm. Scientists have to be funded to give you shit that a rich nigga don't even know. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They go get the smartest motherfuckers in the room, not the richest, yeah. the smartest in the room. And they hide everything in plain sight where they got the, where they have think tanks. They yeah. actually really have shit that they sit in and say, let's get together at the round table and figure out this shit yeah. on how to regulate everything. Yeah, yeah. To where I try to teach my kids, like, you got to know shit outside of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. And outside of then they try to control you with religion. And it's just so much shit to where, bro, we got to go show these kids how to be financially free Come on, yeah. in order to live and no common sense shit. Come on, man. Yeah. Because this shit that they teach us that we don't even fucking use, we not finna use that shit. Yeah. Yeah. We're not finna use that. The only motherfuckers I know that's successful is motherfuckers at MIT. Cause they use they the machines to keep shit thriving. Yeah. If you're not going in school to be at the highest level of anything, that shit ain't for you. Yeah, without a doubt. And 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 you know, hip hop has been one of the best examples of what you're talking about, even with the big and ad that you mentioned, because it saves so many of us. You yeah. Know, you can name a bunch of multi million dollar rappers that didn't graduate from high school. And they save them. And yeah. they're richer than everybody. Yeah. We we figured that out, you know. So that's just a principle that we got to look at and say, nah, we don't have to go through those. Ch those are the channels that they have always told us. Yeah. Yeah. Go to school, get a diploma, go to college, get a degree, then do what? Get then a do job. what? Everybody like, I know I have to work for some relatives else. in my family with every degree that you yeah. can name. Yeah. Yeah. And they struggling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because um, I say about 60 or 70 percent of the people who get a degree don't even end up working in the field that they got, got a degree, degree in. in. So yeah. it, it's, it's a scam. It's a 100 scam, scam. You know, yeah. but, uh, but, but, but but to your point, you say to teach your children, we got to get ahead of this. We got to get ahead of them to let them know from the womb, like, hey, man, no, nah, we're not going down there. But if you got something in your mind you want to do, I'm not going to give, and I can't speak for what nobody else do. You do what you do. Yeah. But if I got 50 racks sitting up that's supposed to be a college fund for my child, 
you be better off suited to say, man, what business can we start? That yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach yeah. my kids to buy land. Yeah. And to teach kids, because somebody going to always need somewhere to live, teach you a trade. Right. Yeah. Something that, 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 that you're going to always be able to use yeah. to make money. Yeah. So to not even have to work for a fucking soul. It feel good. I tell motherfuckers, I wake up and go to sleep when I feel like right. yeah. Even as a person who got a degree, no. the first thing I did once we got out of, out of college, if they tell you you got to go get an internship and sit next to somebody who's actually doing this shit in the field, and you don't even get paid for this. Yeah. So why go through the college thing when you right. going to learn more for just sitting next to somebody? So it seemed to me better to get an apprenticeship or something where you can just have somebody work for a company that, that they want to do. There you go. Or something. There you go. Yeah. And then just enough to your point, you said, um, you said I'm not where I want to be. You know, it's a, it's a certain thing, it's such a thing called, you can be grateful and still not be satisfied. Yeah, definitely, you know, definitely grateful. Yeah, yeah, you're not, you're not ungrateful because you want more, because I believe the creator wants more. For man, us. listen. Whatever you are, I feel like that's what I, bring that, and I just, I just that. told it to somebody, man, like the creator want what's busy. They, they want to get you to where they are. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I tell motherfuckers all the time, I got this advantage, I'm going to eat half a sandwich to stay home. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because it's like I ain't gonna never be satisfied <laughs> yeah, with yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. The hunger for more gonna keep that drive. Right. Because yeah. when you hungry, that drive gonna keep your ass going. I ain't there yet. Yeah. It's like right now, it been certain shit blocking away. Mm -hmm. I've been having mental struggles on wanting to get up to do this and yeah. I ain't it's like now nah, I gotta train, I gotta retrain myself. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this right, shit. Right, to right. what you know what? I'm finna retrain myself and I'm finna go get this yeah, shit. Man. But I'm telling you something, bro. I, I would say this here. Um, not only are you one of the greatest rappers, bro, you one of the greatest minds in this thing, too, with all of the wisdom that you've been able to um, accumulate and impart outside of just hip hop, bro. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you. We appreciate you. And um, we're looking forward to everything that you got coming. We're looking forward to everything from, from the social commentary to the dope verses on Instagram to everything that you're involved in, brother. And keep doing what you're doing and keep repping for the dead end. And yeah. Park, man. Love, man. Kill Thank the Kali you, brother. Thank you, big brother. Yeah, Thank you, big brother. Yes, yes, man. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, tell me you before you go. Yeah. Yeah. The format you did for Michael Jordan, is that going to still be a format that you use Later on, like with them soul beats and, and them old school. Oh yeah, for sure. That's what I'm yeah. doing doing currently. Like that, yeah, that's, that's cool. why. Yeah, yeah, like every every project that I got is structured. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It take me. A, it don't take me long. I really don't have to do no rapping because, like I said, I do a lyrical exercise. I make five songs a day, and I be, pick the best ten at the end of the right. week, mm -hmm. and I put the rest of that shit in the vault, yeah. and I just keep trying to. Going, I ain't. I'm been back doing that now because it just be. I be having so much in my brain yeah. to where uh, I'm my worst enemy. Yeah. Because I write some dope shit that might be dope, and I be saying that shit trash. Yeah. yeah that's beautiful. That's yeah. how you do it. Yeah. yeah. If I can't dunk from the free throw line every time, I don't yeah. even want to do it. And guess what's gonna happen when he yeah. when he find it dunk from the free when he dunk from the free throw line. He gonna try to see if he can dunk from the from, free from the half court. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna go from the free throw line the to the do. three point line yeah, yeah. to half court. Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight to up. jumping out the gym. Straight up. Straight yeah, up. That's, that's where it is. That's what the grace do, man. Yeah, yeah. Man, Kill this is how they man. Go ahead, Keystone. I'm gonna tell them, tell them where they can find you. No question. Man, you can find me at Killer to Go Collie on on Instagram. K Collie on run it, and you just Google me, baby. I'm right there. Man, one of the greatest, man. Much love to you, my brother. Thanks for coming through, man. Another living love. in the seat. And look, look, check this out. We um, we don't, we don't, we didn't have a, a board when we first started doing this to get all the legends. Oh yeah. Before. We finally got us a little makeshift board. So he gonna be the first, first one to sign the board. We gonna come back to everybody else, but uh, uh, hey man, y'all follow my brother, man. Hundred Round Dialogue Podcast, where the name speaks for itself, man. We catch y'all later on, man. Run it, run it. What's up, man? It's your big brother, K. Reno. And check this out, man. The Underground Dialogue Podcast is offering advertising opportunities, man. You can promote your business. You can promote your video, your song, whatever it is that you have, man. Reach out to us if you're interested in promoting on the Underground Dialogue Podcast. All you got to do is email us at undergrounddialoguepodcast at gmail.com. Get it.
And then, man, look, yeah. we, we got we got some merch that's gonna just gonna blow y'all yeah. away. Yeah. Just gonna blow y'all. When y'all see the merch, y'all gonna be wanna just dive through the uh, through yeah. the screen. We got Check some coming, man. We we good, man. We good. So watch that we grow. Already. if they ready they ain't ready to have this conversation or these kind of conversations but guess what we gonna have them anyway underground 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 dialogue we gonna tell the truth we ain't scared like a lot of y'all matters who they are do we bow no not at all dropping bombs on this wicked world so it gotta fall underground Underground dialogue, we gon' tell the truth, we ain't scared like a lot of y'all matters who they are, do we bow? Nope. Not at all, dropping bombs on this wicked world, so it got From fall. the industry to the Oval Office, we expose the darkest motives of them all and disclose what the protocol is, thinking and moving logical, stopping every maneuver possible, and apologizing for truth is not optional. Uh. We gon' help you with what you go through, reshape and mold you, and sweep over them weak lies they told you. If you living with no clue, we gon' deprogram the old you, and you get 